I think Call of Duty World War II is going to flop, Zach. I hope it does. Ooh. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a Battlefield Ooh. fanboy. Is that, is that why? <laughs> is that what it boils down to? You're a Battlefield. Yeah, man? and it was just like that was too smart of a move on their part. They beat <laughs> them to the like punch. just to one up them. They beat them like to the that. punch. Yeah, it was so. I, it's you got to commend them for that, but at the same time, you got to be like, "Fuck you guys." Yeah, I kind of feel like it's a little too little, too late. Um, he, well, here's the reasons why I think it's gonna flop. They people have already gotten their old school war fill from Battlefield. Yeah, a much better game. Um, it's got no buzz around it. Normally, this time of year, it's all Call of Duty, but nobody's talking about it. There's even a beta out, and nobody's talking about it. And That's a good point. The little that I have heard about it isn't exactly praising it. It's not. They're not destroying it, but they're just saying, "Yeah, it's Call of Duty." Yeah, which is. Uh, nope that's not good yeah that's not what you want at all like that was supposed to be the departure from up oh, more call of duty yeah which is what it's been for fucking 10 years exactly huh? so call of, duty again. Yep, call of duty it's like madden you know it's like call of duty 2012 just start naming them after the years yeah <laughs> uh so that's the biggest red flag for me is that no one's talking about it i i saw what culture did a video on it and that's that's what they said. They said, "Yeah, it's more Call of Duty. It's not in, uh, anything that's gonna, you know, set the world on fire." So cool. Yeah. S- you know. So anyway, my point being is, it, they're they have this huge ad campaign behind it. They're doing their normal huge push, but I really think it's gonna flop. And I think this was Call of Duty's big attempt to make a change. Um, how do you feel? Are you looking forward to it? Do you? I know. No, obviously, um, you're not. I'm but. not gonna. I'm not gonna get it. And. Um you know, this maybe this is what they get for instead of we need a change, so let's come up with something good and creative. Instead, they went, we need a change. Uh, let's steal from Battlefield. Like, that was fucking stupid. And so, um, I mean, Battlefield already, it's a great game. It's super fun to play. We haven't played that in a while, but I'm going to have to break that out again. I love that game. Um, but... Um, you know, like that, you you get that feel, kind of like you mentioned earlier. You get that sort of old school war feel from it already, and it's fucking. It does it well. You know, Call of Duty. I can't imagine if if it had this sort of Call of Duty physics, playing a game like that on such a large scale with so many opponents. You know, Call of Duty wouldn't work on that scale at all. Just the way that game's designed is, it has to be a, a bunch of rats in a maze. Is all it is. Call of Duty is just a collection of very short corridors. That's all it is. And it's a Twitch shooter. It's whoever's got the quickest, you know, aim down the sights plus shoot time is the winner. And it had. Which twi- is. Which, to be fair, it's the same in Rainbow Six. Only the difference is Rainbow Six isn't strictly just a maze. It's you got to set yourself up. Yeah. Um, well, I guess hmm. that sort of takes away from the Twitch. I would say. I would say. I would say so because Rainbow Six is a lot about. Uh, knowing the map and knowing how to flank and knowing how to get around your opponent, and there's an objective being held, you know, an entire time. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but no, uh, no, I, I kind of see because be- it's not pure Twitch like the way Call of Duty is. Exactly, because Call no- of Duty is constantly this until you know you're running, scrambling until you see a guy, and whoever can shoot each other first wins. Whereas Call of or Rainbow Six is like these guys are trying to get into this one room. And you got to fortify and hold it down with creative use of of, of uh, special abilities, the mute charges, things like that. And if you know the map well, you can flank your enemies. But I guess the same applies to Call of Duty. Shit, I don't know. Kind of, but maybe yeah, I'm just defending our six. No, I no, I think Rainbow Six has way more strategy. It's not just finding a good camping spot. It's you know. How can you manipulate the map also? Mm-hmm. How could you use your special abilities? Call of Duty doesn't have that. I mean, they have different classes, but they don't have a special character who has this one unique fucking thing. That What's your history with Call of Duty? What's the first and last one you played? Um, the last one was Modern Warfare 2. So it's been a, while. It's been a minute for me. First, I, what was the first one you played? Uh, I think the very, very first one. Just um, Call of Duty? Yeah, Call of Duty. Uh, which I th- want to say was World War Two, though it wasn't, if I remember correctly. But um, it was that uh, it was fun back then. But I remember my biggest shooter was I liked um, <clears throat> Medal of Honor and um, SOCOM. SOCOM U.S. Navy SEALs. Was I was a never, very fun I was game. never too into SOCOM. Is that a 
like a really popular game. I know it was one of the first games to use like online communications and you know tactical navy tactics to to win. Yeah, it was it was really cool. It kind of almost reminded me a little bit of um, Go- uh, Goldeneye, the story oh, really? mode, because there were different levels, like the snow level. There was like a desert level, things like that, and um, it was. Um, attack! You had to advance along a big map. They had really huge maps, and it was a third-person shooter, though. Oh, really? I believe so. Maybe it was first-person, um, but damn, dude, it's so foggy for me. Yeah, it's been but a that long was time. that was on PlayStation Two. So, so yeah, prove me wrong, Call of Duty. Come at me, bro. I, I think it's gonna flop. I think it's n- okay. Flop's a strong word. Let me define what I mean. I think it's not gonna meet sales expectations. And okay. I think it's going to be yet another year of decline in the Call of Duty franchise. So, moving on to the topic of the show, Fortnite. Holy shit, Fortnite. Me and Zach started playing it recently. I think it's fair to say we're both pretty hooked. I love it. I f- absolutely love the game. Give us the, give, give us the spiel. What, so, is, what is Fortnite? So someone so, that's never played it. So, Fortnite is... A giant map. So imagine you're on a giant map with a hundred other people, and you all start out with nothing, and the whole goal is to survive to the final person. There and there's some roadblocks along the way, so it's not easy to find to find a gun or find loot. You have to know where it is, and if you do happen to find it, chances are one of the other hundred people will know about it, and they'll be there waiting for you. So. There's a lo- there is some difficulty in that aspect, but then to add to it, the map continually shrinks, and there isn't a clear path that it takes either, so that makes it a little trickier too. Like the circle gets smaller, but then say it reduces by 25%, there's still a huge area that it could shrink to, and it might shrink to a completely opposite side. Than yeah, like when, when the map is shrinking, it's constantly shrinking to a certain point in the map. And every every game it's shrinking to into a certain into a different point. Yeah. So you don't really know until the game goes on as you're watching the map shrink where it's really trying to head. Yeah. And as as it shrinks, obviously you're gonna encounter other people because the playing field is getting smaller. So and that's when the tension really picks up. Oh yeah. Especially right on the fringe. Um, of the storm, yeah, that's a dangerous spot. The storm is the like uh, out of bounds area where if you if you're in the storm, you'll start bleeding HP until yeah. you die. Yeah. Uh, so how do you win? So you win by being the last guy to survive. So you kill all opponents, or they kill themselves. So th- another aspect that makes this game different is the building. You can build walls, of floors, stairs. The pretty rudimentary stuff, unless there's it goes deeper, and I'm just not understanding it. But you can build um, pretty rudimentary buildings, so you can, if you're near the point where the map is in, is closing in, and you are in the middle, you could just build yourself a fort. If you have yep. a sniper rifle, just post up. Yep. So another fun thing about the game is it doesn't waste your time. Say you you you're in a giant bus that's attached to a hot air balloon that's flying over this giant map, like an <laughs> old school bus, and you're watching all other 99 players jump out. And you're flying down, and if you die right away when you hit the ground, because somebody hit you with their pickaxe, which is the only thing you have at the beginning, then the game doesn't waste your time. It's like leave, you're out of here. <laughs> yep. Kicks you out, lets you join another match. Yeah, it doesn't waste your. It respects my time, which is a big deal to me. Um, this game had a bit of controversy around it because of it, it basically rips off Player Unknown's Battleground uh, formula. The Battle Royale variant, where it's the map is getting smaller. Here's what defines this variant. Large map that gradually gets smaller, has a huge number of players. Um, It's loot-based, and it's last man standing, or last team standing. So uh, PUBG came out, I don't know, about three months ago, and has just been steadily lighting the world on fire with this new gameplay style. And naturally, someone's going to rip that off. Happens all the time. You know what, PUBG, if you didn't want that to happen... Shouldn't have fucking turned your nose up at PlayStation. Uh, yep. So guess what? Somebody filled that hole. And now my hole is filled with Fortnite. <laughs> every night it gets filled. With Fortnite. And it feels every fortnight my hole gets filled. <laughs> Fortnite is two weeks, right? Or I don't know. I think it might be a like a How long is a fortnight? Can you look it up? 
Let's Google that. All right, Zach's going to Google that while I continue to talk about Fortnite. So I've never won. Most I've ever killed is like two people, but it's so fun. And as and it's the, as the game goes on, the tension grows, and it's just it's so addictive. Now there's some things they could add to the game. That, um, what? I looked it up. Okay, what's the results? You were right. Two, two weeks, weeks fourteen f- days. Nice Fortnite. It derives from the old English fourteen night. Ooh, meaning fourteen nights. Whoa, cool. <laughs> so Fortnite, 14 nights. All right. Dude, crossplay edu- education. Yep, you heard it here first. <laughs> heard it here first. This was no- didn't come from Middle We England. defined it. We defined it. Um, so they could add a few things to this game to make it a little more, um, uh, ha- have more longevity to it, uh, like more loot, um, more varied loot. They could add customer, or customer, <laughs> character customization. Um, that would be... Very, very cool. That would be cool. Or more if, characters. Even. Or just even, because the whole point of a game style like this is your characters aren't persistent. When your character dies, it dies. You don't carry your loot or, or any stats to the next game. And that's the way it should be. It's one of the things that def- defines the genre. But what, what would be cool is if you could at least pick a character, skin color, clothing. Maybe you could unlock clothing depending on if you're in the top 25 yeah, hairstyles. The, hairstyles, anything. You could do tattoos, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of stuff you could add. Now, I'm not saying that the developers overlooked this or were lazy. The game's still in beta. so uh, But I don't think they're going to add that. I don't really get that vibe. Uh, but I hope they do. It would be really cool. Yeah. Um, they what do you, could. I mean, maybe they just didn't want to do that during the beta testing. Because, I mean, that probably adds a lot uh, to, the, to the program itself when it's trying to run and have all these different varied people. It's probably a lot smoother and streamlined with just everyone uniform. Yeah, yeah, that's probably if you. The more stuff they add to the beta, the more problems you know they're likely yeah. to have. Because we still get the experience. We still get okay. This is Fortnite. It's not to my customized way, but this is what the game is. So right. I get a feeling for it, and I like it. All right. So if you have a chance, by the way, it's fucking free, dog. Free ninety nine. Free fifty. Free ninety nine. You can't beat that. So go get it if you have a PlayStation. It's free right now. Uh, moving on down the list here, Zach. What is the best gift you've ever received? Ooh. See, for me, that's a tough one because it's like, how do you even define best? Because I've had m- m- the most memorable gift. Maybe that's the best gift, but that's not necessarily the most expensive gift or the one I well, use. Well, yeah, expensive the most. isn't necessarily the best it either. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I would say um, one one that had a big impact on me that I was like so elated to get was a Game Boy Pocket. Oh yeah, that is nostalgia central too. <laughs> that was I got that before before I got any games, I just got the pocket, but just that alone, I was like it was like, "Oh my god. I'm going to be able to play Pokémon." Was it Atomic Purple? It was black. It was all Ooh. black. I have it still. I showed it to you. Oh, Remember? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. It's, you still something's have it. wrong. Something's broken with it. I think it might be the game. The Pokemon Red, trying to play on it, but oh yeah, we messed with it one day, right? Yeah, but something's going on with it. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that <coughs> man, that was just so. I was so happy to get that, and then when I I, I was really into Pokemon at the time, um, I had some exposure to it with friends who had the game. But the TV show, I got up every morning and watched it before school. And oh, you were a before school Pokemon man. Yeah, yep. I, I think like an, seven a.m. I was an after school Pokemon man. Ah, I'd get off school, and the bus would drop me off about near a mile from my house, and I'd walk home. And every day th- at <laughs> at three thirty, I believe it was Pokemon, and then Cops was at four, <laughs> and then Cops was again at four thirty, and then five o'clock was Home Improvement. And then six o'clock or five thirty was home improvement. Uh, six o'clock was King of Queens. Can't believe I remember all this. Six thirty was The Simpsons. Wow. I don't remember what was on at seven, but then seven thirty was The Simpsons, and then eight o'clock we'd switch it over to like the WB for dramas for our for our Buffy on Buffy, Tuesdays, yeah. Dawson's for Creek. our Dawson's Creek on Wednesdays, <laughs> and Monday it was wrestling. Thursday it was wrestling. So that dub <laughs> you I love the old commercials with the frogs. And yeah. they'd, they'd get the cast members from every show to like reluctantly dance in like the, the studio lot while the uh, yeah. while the cartoon frog like danced around them. Yeah. 
I love old TV. Oh, As you can tell, I remember, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I remember my television schedule in sixth grade. <laughs> priorities, folks, priorities. Um, so the best gift you ever received was the Game Boy. Yeah, the Game Boy. See, mine, it's hard because I'm of two minds okay. when I think of this. Um, when I, The knee-jerk reaction to that question is my Nintendo 64 that I was given Christmas 1996. Um, it was the most influential in terms of like what I do in my day to day. It made me a gamer, basically solidified. I mean, I had played a Nintendo before that, an Atari, a little bit when I was a kid, and you know, Super Nintendo. But like, this was like, this is my console now. I'm, I'm a gamer. This is mine now. I'm going to be into games. Obviously, look at what we're sitting here doing today. It had some effect on my life. Yeah. Um, but the most meaningful gift I ever received is that guitar that's sitting right next to us my dad bought it for me in 2005 when you and i were going to the christian high school together yeah um I, he bought it for me for my birthday in in 2005 and it was cool because it's a big gift to receive i never really got big gifts we didn't have a very uh money rich family you know so big gifts weren't really in the in the question a lot but i got that and it told me he believed in me as a musician which was really important you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the most meaningful gift. Obviously, I still have it. It's near me. <laughs> so that, that might be probably the most meaningful gift I've ever gotten. But my knee-jerk reaction is to kind of say the 64. Yeah. So let's do your uh, forgotten game of the week. I believe you're up, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I got a doozy this week. Um Godai Elemental Force. I doubt you've heard of it. I had not heard of this game uh, until you brought it up. Yeah, it's um, it was on PlayStation 2. came out in 2002. Okay. Um, That's pretty early PS2, right? Uh, yeah, it may have been a launch title. I'm not sure. Okay. But um, it was essentially like a beat-em-up. It was, uh, uh, you had to go on missions and attack people, kill bosses, mm -hmm. and it was all melee. So you had um, you had some ranged weapons, but for the most part, it was a sword, butterfly knives, or a pike, or something like and that. And it was like a third person, right? It, yeah, view? it was a third person view. It had fixed cameras in each because back in PlayStation Two, so a fixed camera in each room or each stage of a level. And um, yeah, it was just uh, really fun to just go around and m mash buttons. You know, you just mash your attack and you do combos. Uh, so kind of like that, but um, the it was clunky, and yeah. so looking up when I when I first thought of this game to do, I looked up a lot of reviews, and for the most part, they all kind of uh, shat on the game. Yeah, I did a little research on it myself, <laughs> and the uh, yeah, the game is not looked kindly upon. It got two point four out of ten from Metacritic. <laughs> <laughs> that is a horrible score. Very horrible score. But you know what's funny is when you look up reviews from. Uh, critics and and you know the video game industry for the most part it's negative but for people who play the game the reviews are kind of positive it had a great uh score it had great music that i think i showed you a little bit when it was you know it starts out really simple and and every every different song just sort of builds and yeah at crescendos. first i was kind of hating on the music i was like it's really empty sounding and you know it's the, i wish they'd do more and then right after i said that it, they did more like it, it broke out in a better music so the music is actually really good and that's kind of it seems to be a theme across our forgotten games of the week that we've had we've had vector man uh win back had really good music um what's one i just did recently army the heroes Oh yeah, Army Men had really good music. Uh, Gladius had amazing music. This game has really good music. So it's yeah. just it's a kind of a cool. Asterix theme. had great music. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember saying that about that game. Yeah, I wonder. So music in games must have a pretty huge impact, at least on your memory. It, it must because maybe when you're young, especially, you know what I mean. Even old, like music, just like you could. You could probably sing like fifty thousand fucking melodies. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like there's so many melodies that you, there are so easy to remember. So many rhythms and things like that. But I mean, things like that just they really get stuck in your memory. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. That's another uh, topic for another day is video game soundtracks. Because yeah, man, I could go on that for a very long time. Yeah, it see that it seems to be what's jogging our memory for these old games. So yeah, yeah. 
Uh, very interesting. So did you beat this game? Um, I did, yeah. And I remember even as a kid, because I got it when I was pretty young. How, did, remember, wait, how did you get it? Um, I remember? got it on Christmas with my PlayStation 2. Oh, okay. It was one of the... I got that. Nice. I got Metal Gear Solid 2. And I got ATV Crossroad Fury. Were you really stoked when you got the PlayStation? I was fucking ecstatic. It was that was close up behind the Game Boy Pocket in terms of really. Uh, I want to hear gifts. that story about getting that PlayStation. You know, just yeah, so what? Was, what else did you get with it? Um, with the PlayStation? Yeah, just that. I think I got a a tutorial disc or something like oh, that. Like a like a game demo disc or something. Yeah, and I got and my mom made sure that I opened that one before the actual PlayStation ah, or any of the games. Nice. And so I got them like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I think she thought it would confuse me, but I was pretty sure like, okay, I got a PlayStation yeah, 2. Yeah, you can put that together. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that dumb, Mom. <laughs> Come on, Mom. But, um, so, so back to Godai, uh, you said you beat it. Right? I beat it because I, playing it, I was, I was aware of how frustratingly clunky it was. And it was before I really had a critical eye with video games, so it was it, I it was just I don't know it's it's kind of a a cool thing that it was one of the first games where I realized okay some games are bad and some games are good. So okay, that kind of answers the question I was about to ask you: Is it a good game? Um, you remember it as a good game? I remember it as a good game though. Still, I remember sticking through the frustration and beating it because um, a lot of games that are clunky. You learn what the clunkiness, and how, how it gets to play clunky, it. You yeah, and you learn how to work around I know the exactly clunkiness. Exactly what you mean. Yeah, and so that's that's all it was. I mean, I think the game may have had high expectations because it's it. The graphics are really, really good um, for for its time for two thousand two. Yeah, I pointed out the reflective floors. Yeah. For some reason, I was explaining to Zach that like to re- to render reflections in a video game is really intensive on the um, hardware. So the fact that this game put so much priority in rendering floors which <laughs> seemed really misplaced misplaced resources but it looked really good yeah and it went along with the good music it went along with the good music and they had good other things like fog some of the fog that they added mm-hmm. like little mist on low to the ground it they just it was a really good game graphically do you remember who developed it 3do Oh, that's right 3do yeah, yes. yeah it's a 3do game which so, is also cool i mean 3do had great graphics so mark it down. That's the second 3DO game to make an appearance. And I what forgot. Was, what was the other one again? Army Men 2, Army Sarge's Heroes. 3DO. Army oh, Men, Sarge's wow. Heroes 2. Yeah, 3DO. Yeah, they went out of uh, business in, I think, 2003. They 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 went down. Oh, so this was one of the last games then. Before it had to have been one of the very last games they did. Damn. I sana, hope it wasn't sana, nail, sana. <laughs> nail in their coffin. Because it was a good game. It was better than the critics gave it uh, gave credit for well, good. That was really uh, enlightening. So that is your forgotten game of the week. Godai, Elemental Force. Look it up. And don't look it up in lists of like top 10 worst games ever because it's not. Because they're going to shit on it. Yeah, they're going to shit on it. Just watch some actual gameplay so, or you know, or get the game. Buy the game. I'm sure it's dirt cheap. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to pay more for shipping than you will in the game. <laughs> so I have forgotten game of the week duties next week, and I already know what game I'm going to do. Ooh, but I'll give you a little bit of a hint. hint? It is for... The original Xbox. So that's the hint. That's it. That is that your whole sucks. hint. That sucks. It's a party game. That's all I'll say. That is all I'm gonna say. Gauntlet. No, Gauntlet's not a party game. You party with Gauntlet? I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like party every shit time. Gets, shit gets wild when you put in Gauntlet. On party the Xbox. every time I play Gauntlet. Don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> <laughs> get with it. 